What's going on, YouTube, man? It's your boy that you raw gaming. I don't wrap it up for you, man. I don't sugar it for you. I'm gonna get this shit to you raw, man. In today's video, we're finally doing part two of how to make reads. We're not gonna waste any time today, man. Let's get straight into the content and tell you guys how to make these reads. Now, if you didn't see the first part, I need you to go check out the first part. The first part was us on defense reading an offense. So us on defense reading what the opponent's gonna do to us. Now we're flipping the script here, and this one we're going to focus on us on offense, reading a defense, and what they're going to do, and finding out how do we find openings in someone else's defense. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, we're on the same page, so we got the same understanding of what I'm talking about when I'm seeing how to make reads part two. Now we're getting into the game. So, number one, let's get the bonus out of the way. I got a little extra one for you. I do this one, and this is, this is just something what I, what I teach some other guys online. Um, this isn't huge, but this can give you a little bit of information. They will parry lights if their latency is anything 35 and below. I'm going to say that one more time. <laughs> I'm going to say that one more time. If their ping is anything lower than 35, they will parry the shit out of lights. That's, that's just get that out the way, okay? You can put that with a dual game mode. You can put that with a dom, a breach, whatever game mode. If you look at the scoreboard and anybody that is 35 and below, they will parry the shit out of your lights. Let's just, okay. It's not a game changer, but hey, that's going to that's gonna change how you're approaching a lot of these players. So it let you know that a good players have the ability to parry lights. That doesn't mean they can do it consistently. All right. So now that that's out the way, let's get into the real ones. The real one is number one. Active or passive guard you need to decide are they doing an active or passive guard for those who are a little bit newer Let's say maybe you pick the game up um, on new gen and not old gen um, You're probably not gonna know what an active guard is for those who came from old gen um, And swapped new gen, you know what I'm talking about an active guard is literally you moving your stick around before attacks even come come to you So if I'm standing here, I'm moving my right stick up left right up left right I'm moving it all around no specific order but I'm moving it all around so my thumbs are already in position to stop an attack this came about when we were on old gen old gen had all the lights completely unreactable bro it was it was horrible you had no choice but to have an active guard now everybody spoiled because we all pretty much got new gen now so everyone can react to lights just like they were before the CCU uh, and this skill has kind of become a little bit more obsolete, but I still think that it is a very, 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 very good habit to have because this will help you get out of some of the, the stickier mix-ups who, for example, fighting against a berserker who likes to sit here and fade into lights. That's going to help you a lot. That's a little tip for you. You might want to write that down. I'm going to say it one more time. If you're playing against a berserker, active guard is the best guard when going against a berserker who likes to light spam. Just giving you a, a little extra tip here. Let's get out of that one. Uh, number two, do they bash on red or is it on reaction? Now, remember, we're talking about looking at their defense. We're on offense, we're swinging, and we're looking at their defense. So most of the bashes, I'm not gonna say all the bashes, most of the bashes that we're talking about here are gonna be a defensive style bash. When we say defensive style bash, we mean dodging out of the way of an attack to hit you. Nine times out of ten, it's not going to be a dodge forward bash. So more like your Shigokis. Um, he's got a really annoying side uh, side bash. Um, Kong, I know Kong is he he uh, he's pretty hated among the community because of his stupid ass shield. Um, but those are more of the style of bashes I'm talking about. So some of the attacks on some characters will not be able to catch these characters when they're dodging due to what's called iframes so because of iframes you have to know what character you have now if i'm playing valk i know that a lot of these dudes are doing these bad these dodges i'm not gonna be yeah i'm not gonna be catch them i'm just not i don't know why it looks like it's gonna hit him and i keep doing it but i know deep down it's not gonna hit him no matter if the stick is going through the character model it doesn't matter the game says no so what we have to do is we have to make a read on it, right? We're making a read on it. Now, the read is we need to identify if he's doing it based on read or reaction, right? Now, I made this before the patch came out. So a lot of the bashes, not every bash, a lot of the bashes are unreactable, okay? A lot of the bashes are unreactable. But 
but they can still react to you dodging movements. Correct. I'm going to say it one more time. A lot of the bashes are unreactable. Not every bash, but they can dodge based on the movement. So if I see the character model, let's say Shigoki, I throw an unblockable and he dodges left. Now, obviously, I can't, I'm probably not going to be able to react to the orange indicator, but I can react to him actually moving that way. What else would he be doing, right? It's not a react necessarily. It's more of a hard read, all right? You get, or I, I could say soft read. Uh, it's whatever. It's a read. Okay, it's a read react thing. But you get what I'm saying. You can look at the character and, and because he's dodging, that's what you can react to. You can't actually react to the orange in all character cases. So that's what we're looking at okay next one we're going to is the movement 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 this one is actually overlooked and a lot more higher higher uh, level players are actually doing this to you and you won't even realize it um what they're doing is they're also looking at which direction your character is walking in i'm gonna let that sit for a little bit they're also looking at what direction your character is walking in so if i'm in here dueling you let's say i'm in a duel I'm in whatever game mode and it's 1v1. If I have you walking back in any situation, I know that you respect me enough to not sit here and try to walk me down. That's huge. That's huge. That's huge. That's huge. I'm, I'm going to break it down even more. I'm going to break it down even more. <clears throat> I'm going to break it down for the, the more casual players who understand. Um, if you are fighting a Shigoki regardless of what character, if you see Shigoki backstepping, what does that mean? You never see a Shigoki backstep. Let's let's be honest. We never see a Shigoki backstep. If you're fighting a conk, do you ever see a conk backstep? Come on now. We, we, something obviously is different. If you see something like that, that that's a hint. That's a that's a key right there. That's a cue that you have him. You have him. Maybe you have not even thrown anything and you probably never even fought him, right? But if you see that, just know in his brain. He's telling you he's respecting you as a fighter regardless, okay? I'm guilty of doing that. I'm not even going to sit here and lie and say that I don't I don't ever backstep from nobody. I don't think anyone's going to sit here and say that. If I try to catch myself, I catch myself. If I don't, I don't. I'm Nine times out of ten, I'll backstep. I mean, I, play Shino I didn't play Shinobi anyway, so it's kind of hidden. But when I play any other character, it's pretty obvious. Like, if I'm playing uh valkyrie and i'm backstepping it's pretty obvious I, I i respect him enough where i don't think that i'm gonna have the confidence to do what i need to do to get him out of there so that is very 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 important if he backsteps he respects you that's important because then he has to take everything more serious it means you can up the pressure on him because he feels he has to stop you he feels that you are a threat if he's walking at you the entire time keyword entire time now there are going to be points where you got to walk forward to get your mix-ups because you know certain moves got to track i get it but if he's walking at you nine times out of ten while he's in neutral nine times out of ten he automatically feels he's a better player i'm not going to say he doesn't respect your offense or your defense but nine times out of ten he feels that he is the superior player in the situation so he feels that he's just better than you that's just that's just what it is that's that's what it is uh the next one uh, this is not the last one. This is the second to the last one is the reaction to unblockables. Now, this is the big one. I think this is the one that everybody here is trying to um, is trying to get a better understanding of um, reacting to unblockables. Ah, let's see. How do I explain this in a way um, to understand? All right. So you need to understand if this guy is reacting as far as to Perry Flash or is he just parrying because he thinks he should parry? Um, this is going to be very hard to um, find out when you're fighting a, a, a more a more tougher opponent. Because um, when you get to that level, as far as the high level players, you actually are, you should be training yourself. If you haven't, you should be training yourself to parry toward the end frames of the character. Uh, of the of the animations um, if you go into the training mode and you actually turn this bar on right here what it does is it tells you the timing yeah so um, a lot of players if you're just playing a pickup match they're not gonna be pairing to the end of of the frames they're gonna be pairing so somewhere in the, the the front you know like their earliest 
uh, early middle, maybe the middle, but most of the time they're not pairing to the end. If you get a guy who's pairing to the end, his defense is pretty is pretty good. It doesn't matter how many times you throw that unblockable, he's gonna get it. The only way, the only way to get someone like that to open up is if he makes a mistake. He makes a mistake. Um, to make someone make a mistake is very difficult, uh, but there are, there are ways to do it. There are ways to actually open someone up who's really good at, at defending against unblockables. For example, what you can do is, one example that I do is, is I, I double up very timing. So you'll see me you'll see me most of the time, if you look at my clips actually, if you look at any of my shorts, playing Shinobi specifically, you'll probably see at some point um, when I'm doing something along the lines of something like this. I'll do, uh, say a light or a zone, I'll go into a blockable, I'll finish uh, before letting it land, I'll um, do the light into the same side as the unblockable. I'll have the unblockable again, faint light into the same side. But when I do that, I call that the double up unblockable. But when I do it, I vary the timing. One of them I'll hold and delay it for as long as possible. And then the other one, I'll just do a quick one and redo it. So it's kind of like a combo reset, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's that's a way to get someone to open up. But if he's really mastered pairing it to the last frame, and good luck. You you have to find something else because <laughs> it ain't gonna work. It's not gonna work. There are, there are some guys out here who literally have sat down every character and have mastered it. Um, I only have I only have a good number of characters where if they throw an unblockable, it's it's not landing. You're not landing a, a feign to GB on me. Um, but I have good feel with that character. I probably played the character before, but man, pirate. You can kiss my ass, dude. I'm, I can't I can't do it. I don't know what it is, dude. Pirate feels so sticky. I just can't do it. That one is just... That's a whole other league by itself. But the last one, the last one, the last one. This is important, too, because I think this gets overlooked a lot. And this could actually help you if this happens in an early enough round or early enough in your 4v4 match. And what I call this is the desperation tendency. The desperation tendency um, is literally just... An, uh, a, a big term of saying what is their last resort read right so if like we're saying here on the in the um in this video we're on offense right our opponents on defense they have one hp right you take them into an unblockable mix-up right while you're one hp now this doesn't have to be the situation but this is what i'm trying to give you a scenario of what i mean by desperation tendency you're one hp He's one HP. You do your light and it's one blockable. Now you have to decide, are you going to throw it? Are you going to faint to light? Are you going to faint to GB? Are you going to faint to bash? Are you going to faint to nothing? Are you going to faint to dodge attack, right? Let's say, let's say hey, you faint and you try to GB and he lights you out of it. Oh, you're pissed. You're heated, right? But that piece of information is very, 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 very vital because what's going to happen is when you get to the next round, let's say it was a duel, when you get to the next round, you get him one shot. And let's say you're not one shot, but you get him one shot and you throw that same unblockable. I guarantee you it's, it's, it's over a 60 to 70 percent chance he's going to do the exact same thing he just did. That's just how the brain works. If he lighted you out when you guys were both one shot, which that's what a lot of people do, if he lighted you out, when you guys are both one shot and his life depended on stopping that unblockable mix up and he chose to light out, that's his desperation tendency. That means nine times out of ten, if he throws that at any point, he's desperate. That means it doesn't even have to be it doesn't even have to be um, him being one shot to die. If you throw that unblockable midway through, the, let's say you got your pressure and you're really pressing this guy down. You're walking him down after getting a parry, right? You do a mix up after mix up, and he's he's back against the wall. He's trying he's trying to find any kind of way to stop you, any kind of way. And you throw another unblockable, I guarantee you he's gonna light out because that feels like that's his only way of stopping you to get back on offense. And if that's your only way of getting back on offense, that guy is in trouble. You got his number. Because you, that, that essentially means you shut down all of his defensive options. That means you really know what you're doing in that matchup. Maybe you might, maybe you, maybe you suck against anybody else. But whoever you're fighting, you have his number. That's what that means. That's what a desperation tendency is. Guys, if this video was any kind of help, go ahead, drop a like, drop a sub, comment down below on what kind of content you guys want to see next. What you guys need help with next, man. I'm doing a video on it, man. I'll wrap it up for you, man. I don't sure good it for you. I'm going to get this shit to you raw, man. Thank y'all for coming out.